up on the stage. Give them a hand as they come up. That's the stage from South Africa. It's Savili Hans on stand number two. And Brian Thompson from Christchurch down there on stand number one to complete the six blade cheers in this Golden Cheers final. Well, uh, it, as I say, it's a great pleasure and a privilege to have these blade cheerers. And indeed, it's wonderful that Golden Cheers took it under their own wing to put a separate competition on. Seen as all these blade cheerers from not only New Zealand but around the world. And we do appreciate the New Zealand blade cheerers that weren't into the New Zealand team that also made it possible. A tremendous amount of cheering over there in the, uh, in the marquee on Thursday. And these are the six finalists. This will be an instant prize giving cheerers, so make sure you remain on the board afterwards. Just a quick reminder, please World Wool Handling semi finalists. These have been announced, but I will announce them again. Joel Hanari, uh, Araha Garvin, Joanne Kumaroa, Rachel Hutchinson, Stephanie Kaushis, Jonathan Harkle, Samantha Hurtle, and Mihid Noroa. So congratulations to those World Wool Handling semi-finalists. Um, that event will be held a little bit later this morning. All right, they just just about be ready to get their back on the board, those shearers. They have long wool sheep to shear. They have five of them in this Golden Shears blade shearing final for 2012. And we haven't had a Golden Shears competition or final for some time. So in conjunction with the World Shearing and All Handling Championships, here it is. Our referee, who's our referee? I think it might be Mr. Mike Barnett, is it? You'll, well, note, you'll note there, Phil, that uh, Mike McConnell put a peg up on the wall, a sharpening peg. He brought his oil stone out, and he's got it there just as insurance in case there's too, a bit of dust in the wool and it takes the edge off his shears. He'll be able to put, resharpen it very, very quickly. So they just put a little edge to make it a little bit better, and that's it. Okay. <clears throat> All right, shearers, let's have you back on the board, please. Let's have you out on the board, Brian, William and Mike. The shears are all in the water tin, soaking there. It's ready to go. When they're finished, they go into the tin in the, on the last sheep that goes out the porthole, and the time will stop the moment those shears go into the water tin. Back on the board, please, Brian. <clears throat> Seconds away from starting in this uh, very historic event, this blade cheering competition comes to a culmination here. We have a green light. It means we're all ready to go up there. Timekeepers ready. All set, Lance. Judges ready. Competitors, get set, go. Oh, and just like on the machines, the doors fly open and back out onto the board. And now the silence of a blade cheering shed. Yes, and we can all have a bit of a chat and watch. The silence is golden. And that's one of the things that the blade shearers really enjoy is being able to converse with one another as they're working all day. We're in machines, she's generally speaking, the radio is blaring, no, it's, and there's no communication. And already Brian Thompson is on to the head. Up the neck is Brian Thompson. New Zealand champion from West Milton and Brian's uh, cleaning around the chin. He's got a good sheep to start with. He knows the importance of being first to put the pressure on the South Africans who have been quite dominant here at this uh, Golden Shears. Looks like Mike McConnell, Ian, as well as uh, yes. putting a little bit of pressure back along the rest of the board. I might add, ladies and gentlemen, our co-commentator this morning, Mr. Ian Rutherford, and, uh, of course, uh, I'm not sure whether to call you a resident South African of many years or perhaps a full Kiwi, Ian. You seem to spend a lot of time over there. Yeah, 18 years I spent in South Africa with the training of sheep shearers and uh, the, the shearers there on the board at the present time I know very, very well. 
Well, they're right into their business straight away, and we look along the board now. Brian Thompson, as Ian said, just trying to get out a little bit and get a wee bit of a, a race on the rest of the field. So Brian Thompson gets ready to drop down into the long blow, but Sahuli Hands from South Africa is down in the long blow. Phil Oldfield from Geraldine is there. The Kiwi from down the South Island on stand number three. Then we look at stand four, Sveeni. Manziki Sweeney from South Africa. A little bit of a kicker there. A wee bit of trouble. Mike McConnell on five. Round the long blow. William Craig of Scotland into that first front shoulder and down into the long blow. They don't shear many sheep with blades over in the UK nowadays, Ian. So, of course, that's, uh, they don't have quite the same practice. No, he's telling me, make sure, Ian, you uh, tell everyone I'm just an amateur. I'm just an amateur. I've been lucky and very fortunate to win my way through into this final and uh, he's from Bega, in just south of Edinburgh. That's where William comes from. So we come back onto the board, and who's going to be first off? Uh, it looks like Sawili Hans from Stirkspreit in South Africa on the borders of Lesotho. He's been a champion uh, two or three times in South Africa. And uh, he's been the world champion on a couple of occasions as well. So he's a very experienced campaigner. And uh, coming down, he's not really facing his way towards the porthole. He's going to have to turn the sheep out to put it down. The same as Brian Thompson. Brian is looking. He's got his back to us. He doesn't want us to see what's happening. And down the porthole it goes in a very quick time. Brian Thompson, I think, will be second, will he? Or will it be Mike McConnell? Not too much between those two. And Phil Oldfield also of New Zealand there, just about down the last side. Craig comes over the last front shoulder. Oh, and it looks like Sweeney. Sweeney. On stand number four, the South African. So the two South Africans were first and second on their first sheep. And Sweeney, remember, had that, that animal that performed. He lost quite a bit of time trying to keep it under control. So there goes Phil Oldfield. Come on, Phil. Yeah, he's back in the middle there, stand number three, Phil Oldfield from Geraldine. Back onto the board with his second sheep, Mike McConnell and Brian Thompson, both of New Zealand representative teams. But that's not what they're about. It's the individual open blade final here at Golden Shears. William Craig from South Africa. I thought you said this man was, a, was an amateur. Well, look at him, Ian. He's uh, not that far off the pace, really, as he gets ready to finish off the last side and pop this first one down the porthole. He's doing a great job, our Scotsman down there on stand number six. Yeah, I think he's a bit of hidden talent that uh, wants to be the underdog when he's uh, showing good form because he must have been in good form to get himself into this final. And the she all these men are using the Bergen and Ball shears, the made in England. Uh, the, they've been making them for the last 300 years, Bergen and Ball, and they're using the number one shear. The South Africans are using a Rosa shear made in South Africa. It's a smaller version. It's the number 10 model uh, for anyone that knows what uh, the industry is about. And uh, it's certainly... Although it's smaller, the men seem to be able to use it with more application. And the South Africans, generally speaking, they're not only because they have the experience, but also they have the speed. And those small shears are certainly make a very, very good job of their final shorn animal. Well, they come down over the last front shoulder now, Zuhili Hands from South Africa. Certainly, oh, I don't know, Manzini gives Vini from South Africa on stand number four. He's throwing in a bit of a challenge. The Kiwis are into the long blow there for Mike McConnell. William Craig from Scotland's up the neck, and he'll go around behind the ears very soon. Phil Oldfield's into that first front shoulder. Don't count this man out. He's quite an experienced shearer from the South Island. He did the circuit as well. Now Brian Thompson along the long blow. But it's the two South Africans, and there's not too much between them, Ian. I think they're having a little personal battle up there as well. No, well, they certainly are. And uh, Sweeney Hans, is, who's going to be first this time? Sweeney or Hans? It's going to be extremely close for this, the second sheep. And while they're doing that, I'd, I spoke to Sweeney Hans yesterday... And I said, did he have any livestock? Because the status of them in their home country, in their homeland, is to own a few livestock. 
He said, no, he said uh, he paid it all out on a lobola, a lobola being uh, paying him payment to the father-in-law of his bride. So uh, oh, oh, oh. it cost him all his livestock, so he'll be working his heart out to win something to go home and uh, buy a few more sheep to give him back those stock numbers that he's had to give away for his wife. Just shows you how much he must love his wife then. Yeah. That's <laughs> yes. fantastic, isn't it? Well, Sveeney's just uh, into that first hind leg and he's just slightly ahead of Zoeli Hands on uh, stand number th two there. <clears throat> now we've got Mike McConnell going in. He decides he's going to give those a little bit of an edge, a wee bit of a brush up with the oil stone like Ian was explaining. Wants that little bit better cut and it might make him be able to catch up. Meantime, on stand number six, William Craig from Scotland down over the last front shoulder. And uh, Sweeney from South Africa on stand four. Up the neck and round behind the ears. Then we've got Phil Oldfield on stand three in front of him, just down the last side. Brian Thompson gets into the next sheaf. He's got number three on the board. Uh, this is pretty good shearing, really. And they have three long wool, and then they get into the second shear, Ian. And, of course, that's a little bit different because they don't often shear second shear with blades, perhaps uh, anywhere other than here. I believe they're all uh, full wool. The, fi the five sheep are all full wool. They're from Bagshot, aren't they? Or oh, Sorry, they, they are too, indeed. Five yes, wool. They're from mm. Bagshot, and uh, they've kept them specially for... The, the blade shearing and they certainly a credit to the farmer um, they're in magnificent condition the shearing well there's not much dirt in the wool and so uh, ideal for such a competition there we see Phil Oldfield there sitting the shears on his knee he's propping it on his knee trying to put the edge back on where Mike McConnell and Brian Thompson put a peg on the wall where they can stabilize the shears and make sure that the edge and the angle of the oil stone is exactly what they want to, re to resharpen the shears. And you can see it there with Phil McConnell's, uh, Mike McConnell's shearing now that he's, he's going along very, very well indeed because he's got an, a, a sharp pair of shears, extremely sharp. They're like a surgeon's scalpel. That's how sharp they are. Yeah, and you certainly don't want to put them in the wrong place or put your finger in the wrong place because they'll whip a fair bit of skin off. Now we look and see how it is, stand number four. William, got on you, William. William Craig goes in for another on your right. Come on, you yes, Scottish go, people, you give them a little bit Where's of a hand the up there. Supporters? In goes Feeney on stand number four, and he brings his fourth one out onto the board. Not too far away is the wheelie hands on stand number two. Five competition sheep, they have to shear these long wool sheep. McConnell turns for the last side. Thompson along the long blow. Phil Oldfield's up the neck on stand number three in the middle. But over the tail, this man Sweeney, he's out in front now. It's going to be hard for Zawili Hands to catch him, I think, Ian. Yes, it is, and he's shown performance in the last two days, this young Sweeney. He showed that uh, the more sheep he shears, the quicker he gets, and he's certainly proving that again today. So uh, Hans is going to have to be on form if he's going to keep, try and keep that uh, pace on and try and finish first with a good time. He generally has the quality, but he is being challenged by Sweeney on stand number four. He's being challenged, and Sweeney again has that sheep in the same position where the animal is kicking and getting away. He just hasn't got his left foot around the backbone sufficiently to control it. But Which, of uh, course, just makes the sheep a little bit uncomfortable, and if we were sitting like that, we'd be exactly the same. Yes, they're not used to shearing crossbreds in South Africa, uh, and so the, they are physical, they do strain, and they do kick more than the old Merino does, and so uh, you, you're position will work, your feet must be in the right position to keep those sheep under control. And uh, there we have Swilly Hans now starting to make up a little bit of ground again, simply because uh, Sweeney has lost control, and again he has done so there now. McConnell comes back onto the board, he's the New changed Zealander. His shears. He's obviously gapped his shears, so he's changed them and gone on to the second pair. Okay, McConnell into that first hind leg. William Craig from Scotland just starting to open it, that uh, fleece wool up so that he can drop it down onto the long blow. 
Phil Oldfield comes round on to the last uh, side here on stand number three. Golden Shears, blade shearing final. This has been uh, a first, uh, or one of the firsts for Golden Shears, of course, is to have blades here at all in. They, just on the odd occasion when there's a special occasion, of course, this is a very special, this World Shearing Championships in conjunction with the Golden Shears, the 15th World Shearing Champs. But we're watching the Golden Shears blade shearing final and boy, this is absolutely fantastic. One hell of a battle going off here between the two South Africans. Zawili Hands on stand number two. And Manziki Sweeney on stand number four. Then there's another battle raging, I guess you could say, between the New Zealanders. Yeah. And that's McConnell. Mike McConnell on stand five. And Brian Thompson on stand number one. Phil Oldfield, he's down the last side on stand number three. Then we have a look at William Craig from Scotland. And he's chasing hard after Phil Oldfield. And by Joe's for an amateur shearer here, and like we were saying before, he, he might have been keeping things a bit quiet, all right, <laughs> because he looks as though he knows how to handle those blades, and he's not doing too bad at all. Yes, he certainly is. And Brian Thompson down here on stand number one, he's just quietly working away on his work. He's applying himself. He's concentrating on his work, keeping those shears going and keeping them full. And uh, he's st sticking with... The South Africans, they're only about half a sheep behind, and the Sweely Hans goes in for his fifth sheep, his fifth and final animal. Well, there's so about two, two or three Sweeney. blows there, uh, Ian, between these two now, so yes. he did close the gap quite a bit. Could have a bit of a battle, could have a thrilling finish, you think? Yes, I think we are in for a battle for the first and second, as far as speed is concerned. Okay, McConnell down over that last front shoulder along the long blow for Thompson. Just about finished down here on stand number six is William Craig of Scotland as he'll get ready to go in for his fourth sheep. Right out onto the back, hockey goes. Oldfield's got another one out there on stand number three in the middle. But Ian, I think uh, Sweeney, he just uh, put, the, put the accelerator down a little bit more this time. Yes. He's only... Oh, the, the sheep is kicked with Hans. Sweeney is just that one or two blows, frustrating blows in front. And I'm sure that Sweeney Hans is fully aware that he is just so far behind, just that two or three blows behind, and he just can't pin him back. McConnell gets ready to put, tip this one down the Port Island going for his fifth and final. Brian Thompson is down the last side as well. William Craig gets into that first hind leg and he'll go over the tail with his fourth sheep. One sheep left in the pen. Up the neck and round behind the ears is Phil Oldfield from Geraldine down there in the South Island. Now along the long blow, Sveeney it is on stand number four. Oh, he's putting on a pretty good demonstration, right? He's got the speed. Has he got the quality? Well, we'll find out at the prize giving, which is straight after this. Uh, Into the long blow, getting ready to drop that sheep down. And it's really hands from South Africa. McConnell brings out number five on stand five. Brian Thompson the same. Still that gap between the South Africans and the Kiwis, though, uh, Ian. And it's, uh, it's always been that, hasn't it? Yes, and I guarantee you, Brian is very frustrated that these guys seem to be able to get the jump on them and they can't pin them back. And uh, so too would Mike McConnell. Both of them are champion shearers. Both of them have won the New Zealand champions, blade shearing championships. And they know that they are being challenged by the two South Africans, which are frustrating them so much by just getting that little bit of an edge on them in speed. And this is very critical because the time... Once they finish, uh, they will be penalised. They'll be losing points against the two South Africans. As we look at Sweeney, just coming down a few blows to go. Elias, uh, sorry, Sweeney Hans. I know him as a different name as Elias. But uh, Sweeney Hans, his sheep is kicking and he's lost a couple of air. And there he goes, the South African Sweeney. Well, he's got his five sheep completed and his time taken. That was 16 minutes for That's the five sheep. Not too bad at all, is it, really? He's just over three minutes a sheep. They'll be happy with that. Now, oh, Sir Willie Hans on stand number three, two rather. Just a few more blows for him to go as the Kiwis, the New Zealanders, get into the first front shoulder of their fifth and final sheep. 
But it's going to be Hans' second. He has his time taken. Well Give done, Sweeney Hans. That's the stuff. And now the two New, New Zealand champions, stands number one, stands number five, battling it out to, fin to complete their fifth and final sheep and see who's going to be third off on time. And I, I couldn't guess which one is going to be first at this point in time. The men are at identical positions. Brian Thompson just turning around all from Christchurch. Yeah, he's just and down over that last front shoulder. Mike McConnell turned right with him, though, Ian. And it's, uh, like you say, there's just nothing in it. Have they got a little bit different on the last side? Who knows? We'll see as it unfolds. Phil Oldfield puts his fourth one down the pen, down the chute, rather, and he's got one left, and he gives that blade just a little bit of a rub, gets that edge back on it. That's what he's looking for. Then down the other end, William Craig from Scotland, one sheep left in the pen. Down over the last front shoulder he comes. He's shearing very well and very nicely, and his points are still good. His time points are going to be a little bit against him, Ian, but his quality points, when you yes. look up on the board up there on the screen, they are not too bad at all. Uh, Mike has done exceptionally well for a guy that doesn't. He says he's only shorn about 50 sheep in the last week or two, so, you know, there's just not sufficient numbers to be able to compete but he's holding his own and he certainly has done extremely well and it, Brian Thompson I think is just going to drop out and maybe push the button first will it be Brian yes it is it's Brian from Mike down there on stand number five well done Brian so nothing much between the two Kiwis as well and of course we may see them in the finals of the World Blades later on who knows now they're right around that last couple of blows there for Mike McConnell. He has his time taken. Give him a hand as well, ladies and gentlemen. Well, so we have uh, Mike Feeney was first off, followed by Zawili Hands, then Brian Thompson, and now back to Mike McConnell. And now we've still got these two shearers. And uh, we've got Phil Oldfield on his fifth and final sheep. Come on, give that man a bit of a hand as he goes back in. William Craig from Scotland, he brings out number five. Full of energy, full of earth, and he gets back onto the board and he gets straight into that shearing with the blades. And we watch Phil Oldfield now as he gets ready to drop the sheep down onto the long blow. Just preparing it now as he gets underneath that front shoulder and they seem to head way back into the flank of the sheep and then they put it down on the floor of what we know as the long blow, Ian. Just yeah. part of the style they use. Yes, they're crun crunching the sheep up a little bit the, to increase the... The, the amount of wool being cut and uh, Phil's put that edge back on the shears again and look at him, he's chomping away there and he's filling the shears up and he's cutting the wool much, much better than now since he has uh, put an edge back on those shears. The shears have been made by Bergen and Ball in England and they've been doing it for 300 years and uh, this is, there's only two methods worldwide for shearing sheep. The wool is one of the most complex staples or fibres to sever and uh, the traditional hand shearing which has been going in Bergen and Ball have been making them for 300 years, a very, very old company in uh, Sheffield in England and they make those hand shears that Phil Old is using. As I said, the only other manufacturer of hand shears is uh, the Rosa made by Vicar, Vicar Tools in South Africa and they make the shears that the South Africans are using. Well, they must have them fairly sharp at the moment. Like you said, uh, Phil Oldfield, just put that edge back on, yep. the oil stone down and just give it to make sure that the, uh, the edge is able to cut the best possible way. He's away down the last side. Round the long blow comes William Craig from Scotland in this blade shearing farm of the Golden Shears Open Blades. Around the long blow he comes, punching his way up there. The left hand just holding that sheep just nicely. You know, I don't know whether, is it a real myth or not? They keep telling us that when you shear a sheep with blades, it's just so soothing that they sit still for you. Is that right? Well, we've seen the opposite there. When uh, those sheep that are swelling was shearing, we're, get, we're getting upset, he wasn't in the right position and if the animal is uncomfortable it's going to t kick, doesn't matter whether it's hand or machine, Sean. Well, Phil Oldfield, well done, Phil. Hand, ladies and gentlemen, as yes. he stands up and his five sheep are down the porthole. The water tins on the, on the wall that the shearers put the shears into after each sheep are to retain the, the uh, 
she is to be clean and to keep the grease from building up. The more grease that builds up on the shears over a period of several sheep, the harder it is. And so the water tin there is to dissolve that grease and that's what it's there on the wall for. That's the purpose of it. So we look down now at our last man to finish off and he's halfway down the last side. He's certainly put in a good effort. I guess there's a few people still here from Scotland, is there? Oh, come on, keep him going then. This man's up there doing his bit, and he's absolutely wrapped to be in the final. Right out onto the back hockey he goes. He tidies this one up with just a few more blows. William Craig from Scotland's going to have the last say in this Golden Shears blade shearing final here for 2012. Just a couple more blows in there, and he'll be un able to reach for the time button and pop that one down the porthole. And it doesn't look too bad a job either. He's certainly going to have a few time penalties against him. But as far as quality is concerned, he's made the rank. Give them all a big hand, ladies and gentlemen. And William had said to me before the shears, as you said, he was wrapped. He was, he was over the moon that he had qualified to be in this final. So well done, William. Well, now they just remain on the stage. It's an instant prize giving, Mike, so just remain up there on the stage if you wouldn't mind. Line them all up. Hendrik Borter. Hendrik, you there, Hendrik? You want it over here, please. Well, we have our instant prize giving in operation again, ladies and gentlemen, for this, the uh, Golden Shears Open Blades final. And very soon, our MC, Mr. Craig Cooper, will be back up on stage. And uh, it, once those points have been done, and as always, our points team right up the back there, you can see them up above there on that uh, mezzanine floor, and they have been doing a fantastic job making sure these points get down here as quick as possible. So we've just been watching the blade shearing final for Golden Shears. We will present them with the winners with the prizes in just a few seconds. And after that, we come back with the open wool handling semi-final. Ooh, that's going to be hotly uh, contested. And to follow that, we have the PGG Reichens National Circuit semi-final. Two heats where our shearers have gone around the country shearing different breeds, uh, different types of sheep, rather. They start in September way down in Alexandra. And in fact, they shear the Merino full wool then they go to Waimati to shear the 12-month crossbred full wool. Up to Christchurch to shear the Corridales. Then on to Raglan to shear the lambs. And the fifth and final one is second shear at Pahi Atua. The top 12 come here. And of course, that's what we're going to see very soon after this presentation. And whilst they're shearing in the semi-finals, they will have different breeds to shear all at once. And then, of course, in the final later on this afternoon, the PGG Wrightson's national final where they shear five different kinds all at once. Three from each, total of 15. It's a massive final and one to watch. <clears throat> so those points are just about done. The, everything's gone back up to our point scorers up the top. They put it all through the just computer and it spits it out. One, two, one, and two. we have, in fact, our winners from first down to sixth. So here at Golden Shears, if you've just come into the, uh, into the stadium, we certainly welcome you here. It's warm in here. We understand it's a bit chilly and a bit wet outside. Um, and that's a bit of a shame. However, it is warm in here and the atmosphere is good. It's carried on from last night and the hall is just starting to, people are starting to trickle in as we get through the first part of our program here this morning. And we welcome you all here and hope that you enjoy yourselves because we certainly enjoy it's hard work, but we enjoy bringing this fantastic show, one of its kind in the world, right here in Mastered and in the stadium. Had a fantastic night last night, the Friday night. This is our fourth and final day of competition, right from uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and now Saturday morning every competition has been fought right to the very last and of course that's what uh, top competition and indeed 
everything is about when we get to the golden shears. So, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome back up once again for prize giving, Mr. Craig Cooper. Thank you, Phil. <clears throat> and it's a pleasure for this presentation to introduce to you Henrik Bolter, who is the World Council Liaison Officer and has been Liaison Officer here for New Zealand for quite a number of time. It's great to have you up here this morning, Henrik. Thank you. It's great to be here, involved in this Golden Shares competition as well as the World Golden Shares. Uh, it was a real privilege for me to be involved, so very close with the executive, serving here together and uh, building towards sharing international. It's great to be here, specifically at this uh, Blade Final Golden Shares. So ladies and gentlemen, the Golden Shears Blade Shearing Champion will receive $900. Put your hands together. Please congratulate in first place. South Africans, Mayanzeke Shwini. Mayanzeke Shwini. In second place, receiving $500, congratulate. Zilile Hans, Shwilile Hans. Third place receives $350. Mike McConnell, New Zealand. Congratulate the fourth place getter who receives $300. Brian Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. In fifth place, we have... Phil Oldfield. And in sixth place, receiving $250. Scotland's William the Craig, ladies and gentlemen. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the total points. As we said a little earlier on, the outside board po uh, pen points weren't being totaled. But we had a fair idea in the two South Africans, Mayen Zeki Shwini and Shwe Lile Hans, had a very good tussle there. So there they are. Give them a good hand, ladies and gentlemen. The Golden Shears Blade Shearing Champions for the year 2012.